Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this video on how to generate a fundamental trade idea in Forex and why would you want to do that? Why would you just not want to just make your trading decisions and base your trading decisions on technical analysis? Well, you can do that if you want, but if you really want to learn how the financial institutions trade um, as well as um, increase the chances of you having a successful trade and learn to hold trades for a lot longer for hundreds and thousands of pips rather than being scared out on you know pullbacks which are a natural part of price movement then this is the video for you and this is really for swing traders um, day traders you trade those lower time frames and have to get in and out you know um, at the end of every day this is probably not going to be for you so if you're a swing trader and you do want to you know hold trades for hundreds and thousands of pips over you know a few weeks to a few months and really understand the uh, where direction of price is going in the potential future in the medium to long term and i'm going to give you some chart examples um then this is videos for you so stick around when developing a trade idea it's essential to really ask the question about where is the money going typically um, money flows into different assets depending on what's happening in the market um, at the time as far as you know the, the trading environment so we all know the mantra buy low or sell high but we need to understand the value of what we're buying and what determines value so an example of that which everyone can kind of relate to is hand sanitizer hand sanitizer's value before the coronavirus was something like 99 pence 99 cents whatever wherever you are in the world during uh, and we're actually currently in this coronavirus um, uh, pandemic the cost of hand sanitizer has gone up because of scarcity and demand yeah so that scarcity and demand has pushed the value of hand sanitizer up in forex value is determined by gross domestic product interest rates and inflation and the relationship between those three main uh, macroeconomic data um, uh, points we also have risk off sentiment so risk off sentiment is when the environment changes and there's a lot of uncertainty in the market so again going back to coro the coronavirus um, uh, environment that we're in which is affecting countries all around the world in fact it's affected affecting the whole world we are in a risk off environment because there is a lot of uncertainty in the market now when there's a lot of uncertainty money will uh, flow from into certain assets and out of others so what are those typical assets and where does money flow in a risk on environment which is basically when fundamentals and everything is you know okay in the world to a risk off environment where there's a lot of uncertainty uh, fear you know a lot of doubt in the market so typically what will happen in a risk on so risk on when everything is fine in the world yeah so risk on money will flow into higher yielding assets so higher yielding assets in, in the forex world it's an asset that has potentially um, a good interest rate right so interest rate percentage but this is also determined upon the interest rate cycle whether they're hiking holding or cutting as well but usually higher yielding currencies um, uh, again it will go into GDP yeah so GDP uh, a country with um, that is uh, going into the um, expansion recovery expansion and boom phase of the economic cycle so what you have is economic cycles are like this where you have boom you have contraction you have recessions you have bust or slump then you have recovery then you have expansion and then you have the boom phase again like that 
and then it's an economic cycle and it goes back to contraction etc that's what tends to happen so a country's GDP and with their where, wherever they are in their economic cycle and the business cycle will determine the value potential value of their uh, their currency as well as inflation as well inflation is basically prices yeah so if inflation is high or low that will determine whether the central banks have to increase or decrease um, uh, their interest rates so typically <clears throat> this is what happens when uh, you know uh, this is what where money will flow into flow into the best currencies and then it will flow out of the worst currencies also um, uh, what, you, what will happen is is uh, those current those currencies in particular right are commodity currencies like the AUD New Zealand dollar and ZD the CAD as well because their currencies are linked and their exports are linked to uh, commodities the Australian economy is linked to um, um, things like uh, copper um, coal briquettes um, gold as well New Zealand is a lot of dairy and meat products commodities and the CAD their main export is is oil right so these are known as the commodity currencies um, in a risk on situation away from Forex they'll go into stocks stock market sorry CK uh, stock markets tend to go into oil as well if we have uh, global expansion it means that there's a lot more transportation a lot more oil is going to be used a lot more demand for oil so depending on what OPEC does if they reduce the barrels uh, or what they're producing and there's more demand then prices of oil should go higher um, so that's where money will tend to go into when risk is on yeah and by the way as well um you know us dollar as well is one of those currencies when risk is on at the moment typically because it's doing uh, better it, or it was doing better before the coronavirus than the majority of the other major currencies now in a risk off situation when there is a lot of uncertainty right risk off risk off money will flow into safe haven currencies like the yen and the swiss franc and sometimes the dollar as it's seen as the world reserves current the, the world's reserve currency you will get money going to gold and silver uh i l V E R, and you will have uh, money flow into things like government T bonds, government treasury bonds, as the, uh, the T bonds and bonds are backed up by the government and are seen as you know safe, uh, a safe play to play play to put your money. Um, uh, as is uh, guaranteed by the government which is basically taxpayers so um, that's where money will go into so in a risk on situation money will go tend to go out of here and into risk on assets and in a risk on situation money um, and sorry in a, in a risk off situation yeah um, money will go into these and out of the risk off assets so in a risk off situation Currencies like the AUD, NZD, etc., right, will suffer in a risk off situation. So money is flowing from one place to the other. Yeah. So if you know what happens typically, depending on the environment you're in, you can then start to generate trade ideas depending on what's happening and the environment. So one of the typical trade ideas that we trade in the Forex market is, as I alluded to in the last slide, slide sorry, is divergence. So divergence, what is divergence? Is looking for the difference in um, 
in, in currency, currency and central bank policy. So let's say, for example, you have a uh, country like, for example, the EU, uh, EU or Europe, Europe, yeah, that are going into a potential recession. Germany is crashing. Um, you know, uh, Italy, France, Spain—they're all doing terrible um, economically, right? And all heading potentially into uh, recession, right? And on the other side of that, you have the United States dollar, who are growing GDP is at an all-time high um, you know creating lots of jobs and uh, everything is, is is brilliant you know in the uh, in in the US where do you think the money is going to go it's going to go into investment it's going to go into the in, into the US it's just a no-brainer if you're an investor right and you've got tens or hundreds of millions of pounds at your disposal and you want to um, you know, invest your money and create jobs, etc. Where are you going to invest your money in uh, an economy that is heading into a recession, or an ex uh, an economy that is going into um, the expansion phase and the boom phase? Just makes sense for you to invest in the stronger one. Again, so there's a divergence between where they are from a gross domestic product perspective, and it's the same thing with interest rates. Interest rates. Um, it, sometimes it's not about where you know whether the, the the highest interest rate. It actually matters where you are on an interest rate cycle. An interest rate cycle looks like this. Yeah. Now, typically in a um, in a recession, right? What will typically happen is you will get interest rate cuts, and in the boom phase. Or an expansion phase, you will get interest rate hikes. Now, if you don't know why, again, um, I have the uh, free course. If you go to trading180.com, sign up for free. And um, in that course, not only will you learn about supply and demand, um, you will learn about fundamentals and the basics of fundamentals and the relationship between GDP, interest rates, and um, inflation. Yeah. And then you've got the holding. Uh, so that's when central banks are um, happy with where they are when it comes to inflation. And the inflation target is 2%. So the further you go away, either below or above, will determine whether central banks will tend to either cut rates, so cut, right, hold, or hike yeah and like I said typically hiking see, hiking comes um, with an expanding economy boom phase expansion phase recovery phase and central bank cuts which is what you're seeing right now with the coronavirus you're seeing the central bank you know Bank of England you'll see in the Federal Reserve the Bank of Canada central banks pretty much all around the world are cutting because they are. They want to um, avoid recession, which is probably you know unav unavoidable at the moment. So, divergences in interest rate policy. If there's no divergence, if both, for example, the EU, yeah, Europe and the United States are um, cutting rates, is that a trade idea that you want to trade? Yeah. So you might have to look for a divergence in something else. There's divergences in GDP, divergences in interest rate policy, divergences in inflation, yeah? So um, you might get all three, you might get two, you might get one, you might get none, yeah? So it depends, you know, that's what we need to see. We need to see, that's how we generate our trade idea is by looking at what's happening potentially or what's going to happen potentially and seeing the divergences in um, in in these uh, in these macroeconomic you know data points, the carry trade yeah. So the carry trade is also a trade idea where what traders will do typically is they will borrow a currency who has a very low interest rate. For example, 
Europe and oh, they were they were there I think they're still there and before the coronavirus pre-coronavirus on the dollar side interest rates were actually quite high so I think right now they're at 0 0.25 but before they did that before they cut to 0 0.25 it was actually at 1.7 oh 1.25 sorry apologies 1.25 percent so they cut by one basis point recently so what typically happens in a carry trade is that investors will borrow this zero percent and put it into a higher yielding currency so borrow for practically nothing and get back 1.25 percent so this is where the money is going that's what you call that's what's known as the carry trade yeah carry trade um trade idea yeah and again these uh in this in this time right now um the carry trade idea is probably non-existent because all central banks are pretty much cutting rates and they're all pretty much very very similar very very low um and again, I'm going to be showing you some some charts of um, these trade ideas. So risk off, which is basically what we're in right now, risk off. Now, risk off can be divided up into local and global. So local would be, for example, an election. Yeah, global would be, for example, the virus and to certain extents, the trade war as well. Yeah, that would be more global because China are the world's uh, pretty much economic engine. And if and what happens in China, as the saying goes, if China sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. So um, anything to, to that hurts China and their economic progress or slowdown, then, um, you know, that's pretty much going to be a global um, idea. So, for example, a local uh, um trade idea from a risk off perspective would be an election when there's uncertainty about which party is going to get in if it's a party that is maybe pro finance pro bankers etc then um excellent if it's a government that is maybe you know tax the bankers drive them away etc etc then that's not going to be good for that currency investment etc so that's another trade idea brexit was it was was a was a trade idea yeah brexit was a trade idea and which currencies did it affect it affected gbp and the euro so if you were a trader if you were a trader <clears throat> what currencies would you look towards trading uh, Brexit or as far as um, uh, tr trading against the pound and uncertainty with the pound and uncertainty with the euro well in a risk off environment we already know that risk off currencies are JPY and CHF so those are the risk off currencies so then what you would do is pound yen buy the pound short the i'm uh, sorry buy the yen short the pound buy the yen short the euro buy the swiss short the pound buy the swiss short the euro that's it and that's how you know a simple way a really kind of simple way of um developing a trade idea first because we know where money typically goes into in a risk off environment which is the yen and the Swiss franc and we know that there's uncertainty about how Brexit is going to affect Europe and the UK when it comes to their economic standing so it's a no-brainer then to then go to a price chart and then look for the trade direction look for those trade pairs look for supply or demand zones in the direction that you want to trade that's how we develop trade ideas yeah so let's look at for example um some you know how certain trade ideas over the years have panned out and how you could have made you know hundreds if not thousands of pips so in 2018 and into 2019 most of 2019 
there was a trade war between the US and China, which really did escalate and it was seen as a really like a, a massive risk off event because again, um, two of the world's biggest economies putting tariffs on each other. Um, and there was a lot of uncertainty around how uh, tariffs were going to affect the, the global economy. Uh, we were in a risk off situation. So um, it really started before July 2018 as far as talks. I think it, from what I remember, I remember reading about the uh, potential trade war um, in around about February, March of that year. And uh, obviously it started escalating. That's when the tariffs actually were, you know, tick for tat etc so um, uh, that was a risk off situation now what currency do you think or currencies do you think you know or, or assets pretty much you know could have taken advantage of that so um, one of the currencies that really isn't spoken about but would have been an obvious choice is the Australian dollar Japanese yen and again because I um, in the previous slide um, I've said that in a risk on situation, the AUD yeah, will tend to do well as it is a commodity currency. In a risk off situation, the JPY is the currency to buy in uncertain times. And what happens with the commodity currency and especially with the Australian dollar and the Australian uh, economy is heavily, heavily reliant upon um, selling um, their goods and uh, providing services to China. So if China slowed down, one of the economies that's going to be heavily affected is the Australian dollar, right? An Australian economy. So from really from the beginning of 2018, which is again where these talks were um, starting to happen, China potentially slowing down the trade war, look at pretty much what has happened. Right, what has happened, and we've gone from one risk off scenario to another, so from trade wars to the coronavirus. And really, the coronavirus, you know, has really started at the beginning of the year. And again, look at what has happened. Risk off has pretty much been lasting on, it's been to varying degrees, risk on, it's not necessarily a light switch, it's not risk on or risk off, it's varying degrees of risk. But overall, we've been in a risk off situation, a lot of uncertainty around global growth, and now the virus is also affecting global growth. So the yen was the one to buy, and the Australian dollar was the one to sell and that trade idea lasted for and has still it continues to last for two years if all you did was just get short at supply zones at pullbacks would you have won every trade no nobody wins every trade but the money was made to the downside the money was made on pullbacks and getting short yes there would have been opportunities to get long but from the highs to the lows, potentially there was about 3,000 pips to make in various points, you know, on, on, on the price chart. So for the past couple of years, we've had a divergence in um, GDP growth as um, from the US and the and Europe. So you can see that, um, especially in 2019, we've had some decent growth, 3.1, 2%, 2.1%, 2.1% into 2020. And so when we look at the growth compared to the Euro area, Euro area has been very, very weak. 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0.1%. Yeah. So there's a divergence in growth, in gross domestic product yeah, between the US and the um, and, and Europe and how does that look like on a price chart so if you were looking at 2019 and looking at the divergence between GDP and using that as your baseline trade idea right areas to look for short trades right there 2019 pips 
potential from the 2019 highs to the lows, just holding that trade around 793, 800 pips uh, to the downside. And I'm not saying that you should hold, you know, one trade for the whole year, but there was definitely enough. The money was to the downside. That's where the trend was. That's where the big moves were, the bigger moves were. Yes, there were periods where you would look for pullbacks, but at each pullback, what you would do is just look at that as an area to potentially get short. So again, fundamentals and dive, uh, you know, and trade ideas. If you can develop a trade idea um, and understand um, why price should want to either go to the upside or to the downside over a certain period of time, fundamentals don't change every day. Macroeconomic. Um, um, uh, data doesn't change every single day. GDP, you know, um, countries don't go from a recession to the boom phase in a matter of, you know, weeks or even a month or two. Remember, for a recession to be, uh, for a recession to, uh, be, uh, any economy to be in a, an official recession, you need two quarters, yeah, of negative growth so minus if you know from minus 0 0.1 negative growth yeah and two quarters would be six months right and the typical the average recession they say lasts between a year and a half to two years so if you had a a, a country that was going into a recession yeah or that was in a recession you know for at least typically on average for the next year and a half or at least a year right you should want to sorry i don't know why my writing is slanted like that but you should want to short that currency and then find a country and an, and an economy that is booming yeah or in the expansion phase or the recovery phase of the economic cycle again a divergence yeah divergence in economic cycle and this is what's happening in fact let's look at one more let's go to somewhere like um let's look at gold and what's been happening with gold so gold demand trends full year and fourth quarter of 2018 this was published in on 31st of uh, january 2019 uh, central banks demand for gold soared to a multi-decade high in 2018 so they were literally buying gold why were they buying gold they obviously saw um, uh, that the economy and the world economies were going into there's going to be a lot of uncertainty coming these are the smartest guys in the room when they talk you should listen they are not basing their decisions on a pin bar at a level of support or resistance they are doing the fundamentals yeah so a trade idea if you read something like this and you're a gold trader um, and the central banks are buying then what should you have been doing what should you have been doing you should have been buying gold right you should have been buying gold 2018 here of course there was a little bit of a dip in that which allowed the central banks to buy for cheaper but during 2018 especially at the beginning of 2019 and reading that article there if you were buying look at pretty much what was happening and what happened again um it was backed up by uncertainties in the trade war and now the coronavirus nice buying opportunity down here excellent to the upside there we are. That's just a nice pullback for the central banks to buy for cheaper right there. So with that being said, generating trade ideas is what really you should be doing um, before looking at a price chart and then look to the price chart in order to time your entries and determine if you're buying at the high or if you want to be buying on a pullback and buying on pullbacks and at lows um, are where the best buying opportunities are but you will never determine that through price you can only determine that through trade ideas and generating trade ideas and as long as you know where money typically goes in an environment then you can just uh you know trade that trade idea anyways guys uh, my um uh, euro dollar alert is going off and uh i will 
see you guys soon. Any questions, please email me at info at trading180.com. Don't forget to sign up to the free course on the website, um, learn to trade supply and demand as well as fundamentals as well. All right, take care and speak to you soon. So if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone for X strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hardworking as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.